The author, Paul Coelho, writes this, don't give up. Normally, it is the last key on the ring which opens up the door. Now, I don't have a lot of keys on my key ring. My car key is something separate. And I use a garage door opener to get into my house. So I don't always use the keys every day because sometimes when I get up to the church, the door to the church is open, the offices may be open. But more often than not, there are days that I am the first one up at the church, up at the office, and I'm usually going through these keys and it never fails. I always seem to get the wrong key that opens up the church, that opens up the uh, office door. And I am well aware that people have told me there's some kind of color thing that you can put on each one of these keys to uh, show which one is which. Not interested, no thanks. You know, I remember years ago, there was a very talented musician, organist, a pastoral musician here in our diocese. And he, he played a lot of uh, weddings and funerals at various churches. And he had a set of keys, not like the skeleton keys here, but he had a whole big set of keys. Um, it was huge. I don't know how he couldn't keep them in his pocket. That's how many keys were on it. And I always marveled that he was would able to be able to say, oh, yeah, this is the key that goes to... Uh, Our Lady of Lords in Milltown, and, and this is the key that goes to Immaculate Conception in Somerville. Um, he, it was, it was a, a mystery to me as to how he could keep them all clear in his mind. So why am I thinking about keys today? It's because of today's gospel. The man who is paralyzed and his friends try to get him into the house to meet Jesus and hopefully be cured by Jesus. Now the story is found in three of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And in today's Mass, it is the version that is found in Mark's Gospel that we hear. The part of the story that I want to share with you is this. Very simply, Mark writes, Many gathered together so that there was no longer room for them, not even around the door, and he preached the word to them. They came bringing to him a paralytic, carried by four men, unable to get near Jesus because of the crowd, they opened the roof above him. Opened the roof above him. You've heard this story before. What comes to your mind when you hear that story? Do you think about your own house, somebody climbing up on the roof trying to get in, take off the shingles? That's not quite how it would have been in first century Palestine. There would have been low houses, not several stories high. The roofs would have been flat. And sometimes they say that there might have even been a stairway on the side that led to the roof. The roofs at that time, as I said, which were flat, were made of mortar, tar, ash, and sand. And it was not uh, you know, uncommon for grass to be growing in all of the crevices on the roof. So they said that often, if, especially if there's a stairway, goats would go up to the top of the roof and you would find them on the top of the house uh, eating the grass in the crevices. So when Mark, the gospel writer, tells this story, the word he uses to say they opened up the roof, the friends of the paralyzed man, it's actually translated, they scooped it out. They scooped it out because of the ashes and sand and mortar that made up that roof. Now, many scholars will say that we cannot accurately uh, reproduce this scene, how it actually played out and what the house really looked at like. But the point of the story is this. They couldn't use the front door. There probably was no back door. And whatever windows or openings there were, Obviously, they couldn't get through them because of the crowd. So someone in the group says, let's go for the roof. Somebody says, let's go for the roof. Now, did the paralyzed man freak out a little bit? Wait, you're going to take me up to the roof. I do want to see Jesus. But, you know, there might be goats up there. What, what are we going to be doing up on the roof? So there's a lot about the story that we don't know. Some of the you know inner dynamics between all the characters but there is a key to the story that helps us understand its meaning for us today. And the key is this, faith. Faith 
is the key. It was faith that had those friends open up their minds and they began to say, we have to think of an idea, even though others are going to call us crazy, to get our friend next to Jesus. Faith was what opened their minds and their hearts. Faith is the key to understanding this story. It was the faith of the man paralyzed. You know, he was holding on for dear life, I'm sure, as they were lowering him through the, uh, through the roof. He was probably a little scared, wouldn't you be? But he might have also been thinking, what if Jesus left by the time they finally opened up this roof? So it was faith that gave the man the trust to tell his friends, go ahead, do it and I'm with you, I'm all in. There are many healing stories in Mark's gospel, and when you read them, it always seems to say that the key element of the story is faith. That's the key. In all of the stories, it's faith that's the key to healing, to risk-taking, to finding the way in a complicated moment. And for Mark, faith is putting God first, trusting as Jesus teaches us to trust, and believing that Jesus gives us this spirit, gives us this power to do what we thought we never could do, or to come up with some new way to live authentically in helping others. Now, just to be clear, this story and other stories like it in the gospel are not suggesting that if you just have enough faith, you'll get what you want. Because there are too many of us men and women of faith, who have experienced that it's not simply having faith that you're going to get what you want, because it doesn't always happen that way. But what faith does open for us, what faith promises, is that our mind can be opened, that we can hear what God is telling us and promising us. It's faith that opens our hearts, that we can be stronger, no matter what challenges we face. And certainly it's faith that's been the key to helping us face the challenges of our own time. And it's also faith that helps us to open our hands. It's not being altruistic. It's not being a good or nice person. It's faith that helps us to become the kind of friends who take risks to help someone who is in need. Maybe even to see all people as our friends and in helping them and serving them, bring them closer to Jesus. Often we think that there are many different ways to solve the problems of our life, to get answers to the questions of the day, the challenges that we face as a country, as a church, as a people. And through the past year, as I said, what we have learned is that while there are many well-meaning helps it is only faith that keeps us steady, keeps us calm. It is only faith that allows me to be led and to let go. It's only faith that says I have to do my part and I will receive the strength to be a servant. Faith indeed, indeed is the key. So maybe today you might think about that guy up on top of the roof on his stretcher. Maybe you might think of those friends opening up a place, a spot, a hole in that roof. Maybe you might thinking, be thinking about that crowd in the room with Jesus, like, what's going on up there? What's, what's that we're hearing? Maybe you might even think of Jesus, who might even be laughing or smiling as he sees these friends lower their friend through the roof to land right in front of him. But then maybe what you might do is, Take a look at your keys. Take a long look at your keys. And then think of your heart. Think of your mind. Think of your hands. And which of them needs to be more open? Which of them would you like to experience as being more open? And realize that it is faith in Christ and faith in him alone that is indeed the key that will open all of them.